Miss Forster, I can't talk to you right now. Why? Because Amber doesn't want you to? Look, I know you two are hiding some kind of secret, and I want to know what it is. Now. Where is Becky? On her way. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. She just got a job at Forster International, you know. This is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to her. She's not gonna pass it up. Amber, you know, if she's not on that plane this afternoon, I wouldn't count on Eric giving her a second chance. She will be. I am so sorry that this whole thing got everyone so stressed out. You've been stressed out more than anybody. I know. It's just that I'm so happy here with you and our little boy. Sometimes it feels too good to be true. Like something could just come along and spoil it all. And Becky was jealous of us, you know. Yeah, of what we're giving a little Eric. Family, security, two loving parents. Everything she couldn't give her own child, is that right? Exactly. But I talked to her, and she's not out to get us. She's happy for little Eric. Of the way that he's gonna grow up surrounded by people who love him. If she's so happy for us, why did she take off with our child? Oh, well, that was, that was just one of those impulse things. You know, I mean, she knows it was wrong. But that's, that's not the point. The point is, she's not a threat to us. Nothing is. God, it almost feels like a miracle sometimes. But after all of the obstacles that we have had to face, one after the other, it finally, we can just relax and enjoy what we have. Each other and our little boy. It's more than I've ever had, Rick. Yeah, I know. I will never let anything get in the way of that. Look, Miss Forrester, I know you don't like Amber. No, I don't. She's dishonest, and she's trapped innocent people in her lies. Like Rick, you, me. Well, whatever is going on here, Becky, it's obvious you're not very happy about it. Amber's not forcing me into anything. <sighs> now, why don't I believe that? I'm moving to Paris. It's a huge step for a girl like me. I've never really been out of Furnace Creek. So maybe I'm a little scared. Or maybe there's more to it. Come on, Becky. You can tell me what it is. Maybe I could even help you. Go on. <laughs> My God, what has Amber done to you? Nothing. You don't care about me. You just want to break up Amber's family and send her and that baby back to Furnace Creek, and I am not going to help you do it. But you could, right? Is that what you're saying? No. Becky, you know something that could rip this marriage apart. Now tell me what it is. I need to know. Tell me the truth. About what? It's not a mess. Well, maybe a little. Really, you should you should be glad you're not there. I mean, you know, I'm not a woman of your sensitivity. You know. It's your dad and me and Thomas, you know, the guys, that type of thing. Male bonding. Oh, yeah, of the worst kind. You know, we're just all sitting around eating cold pizza and drinking stale beer. Well, not Thomas, really. He doesn't drink the beer, but... That's a relief. You know, we were walking around in our underwear, scratching ourselves and, you know, belching whenever we feel like it. Especially Thomas. I mean, you should hear the stuff that comes out of that kid, boy. <laughs>
for the nurse here. You're not okay, Doc. I'm okay. I'm fine. Sit. <coughs> maybe, maybe today they'll find out that baby's lungs are mature, and by this evening you could be holding our beautiful dog. me. What is wrong with you? Why do you want to break up a happy family? Happy? Oh, of course, you're getting Amber's version. The truth is, my son is miserable in that marriage. No, Rick loves Amber. <sighs> Becky, he only married Amber for the sake of the child. Sooner or later, that marriage is going to fall apart all on its own. But, but it can't. What about the baby? What would happen to my... My little cousin. What about the baby? You really care about him, don't you? He's here? Oh, oh yes, he is, but he... Hi, dear. Hi, little scary. Oh, did you miss me? I'm right here. You don't have to fuss. No. Mr. Forrester, are those Becky's tickets? Yes, yes, they are. Well, I know she's not here yet, but... Um... Actually, she is here. What? Her car's out front. Then where is she? Maybe she's in the guest house with Brooke. I'll go check. Oh, my God. Becky's at the house with Brooke. Please, please don't say anything. I think I know what's going on here. How's Thomas? He's doing great. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, of course he misses you. But he's just uh, spending some time with Grandpa and me. What? What do you guys do? Oh, we just sort of hang out. And yesterday we went in the ocean. That kid's a real sand magnet, I'll tell you. Sand everywhere on his toes and his ears. Diaper. Can't get enough of it. Did you make a sand castle? Oh, yeah, you sure did. Great one, too. By the way, reminds me, I brought something for you here. It uh, says something that Thomas picked out especially for you.
It all makes sense now. What makes sense? The baby. That's what this is all about. I don't know what you're talking about. Becky, Stephanie told me that you had to give up your child. And this little boy, well, he reminds you of your own baby. Reminds me. Yeah. That's why you're hiding Amber's secret. Not to protect Amber, but to protect her baby. You really love him like he's your own, don't you? And you don't want to see him lose his family. I just want him to be happy. I know. And he's not going to be happy growing up with two parents who don't love each other. So, Becky, if you really <laughs> care about little Eric, if you really care, then he would tell me the truth. What secret is Amber hiding? She, um... She's not really... What are you doing? Come on, Becky, you can tell me. She has nothing to say to you. Amber, so help me. Come here. Hi. Oh, there he is. Hey, little guy. Is everything okay? He's fine. Well, this was one hell of a disappearing act you pulled, Becky. I'm sorry, Mr. Forster. I'm sorry? That's all you have to say? You take the baby, you don't even leave a note? You know, I already gave her a big lecture about this, and she's got a plane to catch. No, so no, I... wait a second. I'm having serious second thoughts whether Becky's ready for these responsibilities. Mr. Forrester, I know... She is, definitely. How can you say that? Well, she just went to say goodbye to her parents. And Becky realizes taking the baby away from her, his family, you know, it was a mistake. Please, Mr. Forrester, this job is her one chance to turn her life around. Please don't take that away from her. This means everything to her. One more incident like this. Mr. Forrester, I never meant to cause anybody any harm. I didn't mean to. Becky hurt promised you. me that this would never happen again. So let me just take the baby and we'll put him back down. Tell you what, why don't you put him down and you could say goodbye? Come on. Well, catch up with you all at the house a little later. God, that was close. Amber. What? I don't know if they can do this. They could have been there. Well, you can be. A few weeks. No, you can be there right now. You see, that's uh, that's a magic seashell. If you just uh, hold it up to your ear, you can hear the ocean. Lying on the beach with Thomas and me, and you can feel the warmth of the sun on your body. And the only thing you can hear, the only sound that you'll hear is the sound of the ocean. The best part is. Feeling of the warm sand between your fingers and your toes.
lying here fighting for your life and I'm making <laughs> jokes and bringing in sand and I just, I don't know what to do, God, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry, I just don't know what to do here. Agreed. Everything. I know. I'm sorry. I thought I was strong enough. No, you you are strong enough. You you are. <laughs> but he's my son. What can you give him? Nothing. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Of course it matters. But, you know what? We are not even going to discuss this. The limo driver's already here. Your bags are already packed. They've been packed. Everything. I Stop. don't care. Stop it. No. Stop. You can't do this. No, no. We are this close. You want to run off with him? Huh? And what? What? I don't know. Ruin his life. That's what you'd be doing. Now you are going to go over there, kiss that baby goodbye, go over to the Foresters, thank them, then get your butt on that plane. I can't. You have to. Don't look at me like that. This is the right thing for you and for him. And you know it. Love him. You'll go. Right now. You will get on that plane. You will never look. 